Hot pink houseplants are a hot topic amongst plant collectors, and the philodendron pink princess is the hottest variegated plant out there. I don't like the color pink, but I do like a hot pink plant. I love it for its heart-shaped leaves that have this really nice green color and also bubblegum pink variegation on it. Hi, I'm Fiona from Feline Jungle, and today I'm going to be talking about another plant royalty. It's the Philodendron Pink Princess. I'm going to talk about the care and also my experience on how to get more pink on this plant. First, let's talk about the background. This is an error that's native to Colombia. It's a climbing type of philodendron that likes to grow vertically on trees, so it'll definitely appreciate a moss pole. This rare plant is every collector's dream. It's definitely not hard to find this plant, but finding a plant that has high variegation and good genetics is hard and that reflects on the price point. So this price fluctuates between $300 to $50, depending on factors such as supply and demand, the quality of variegation, and also the different sizes of the plant. Just talking with my experience, the first time I got it was two years ago from a private Facebook seller and I got it for $50. It had pretty low variegation and I had a long intensive three part video on where I tried to encourage more pink on my plant. The first thing I did was air layered it and it had amazing results. I had a fully pink leaf. So after that happened, I decided to cut up the plant and grow it as individual pups. So here is some of the babies that I propagated from that original plant. So this is one and as you can see, it has pretty low variation but it has one pink speck on it so there's still hope and then here is a smaller cutting that i took from this plant and this also took a long time to grow but it grew really fast um, it grew really fast but it only has one speck of pink in it so the genetics and also the quality of variegation definitely plays an important role. And here's when I want to introduce you to a nicer specimen that I got from my friends at Plant the Studio. This you might recognize from when I did a plant shop tour of their plant shop in Williamsburg in Brooklyn. And in that video, they have a lot of rare poyas and a lot of rare philodendrons. I would definitely say they have the best price point on pink prints they have a Etsy shop that I'll link in the description below and you can see that the quality of their pink princesses is really nice this is a cutting that they usually sell for around $50 so same mind you same price as when I got this low variegated pink princess and they also sell full-size plants for a hundred dollars from my experience of owning a lower variegated pink princess and a higher variegated pink princess i definitely think it's worth a few bucks just to get the higher variegated one it will save you a lot of headache trying to encourage that pink if that's what you want like it took me a lot of experimenting and it was a lot of fun and i, I was able to give a lot of cuttings to my friends from all the cuttings that i made for my pink princess but it's definitely a lot more work and this one will save you the trouble. Recently, I saw that the price are dropping and it's more available in plant shops. So you can decide whether or not you just want to get one right now. From owning a couple pink princesses, I can tell you right away that they're really easy to take care of and they grow really fast all year round. But even though they grow really fast, there is a few things that you have to pay attention to and hopefully those things will help you encourage more pink in the plant too. Let's start off talking about the growing mediums. Philodendron pink princesses do really well in just well-draining soil mix. And here I have two pink princesses that are growing in a well-draining era mix that I made myself. And I have a video that you can check out. I use this mix for all my philodendrons and just aeroids. Moving these two aside, I also want to show you this cutting that I'm growing in ponds. It's a substrate that is used for semi-hydroponics. And the reason why I use this is because this was originally a cutting that was growing in water. And my friends at Plant the Studio suggested that I transfer it into ponds or LECA to encourage more root growth. And it just exploded as soon as I put it in ponds. You can see through this glass jar that the roots are growing 
all along the walls and it's just exploding with roots and also exploding with leaves. I think it grew like these three new leaves just in ponds. So if you're trying to root a pink princess cutting, I would suggest growing it in water and then transferring into ponds before actually transferring into well draining soil mix. I've also experimented with putting these plants in different lighting conditions. And I find that if you put them in indirect bright light, they will have these nice green emerald leaves. And recently I've tested putting these plants in grow lights and I find that their leaf become a lot darker and the pink variegation becomes more apparent. Now, if you don't give enough light for this plant, it will eventually turn into this darker green color that you see here. And it will also begin to revert and lose that pink variegation. Right now I have all of them living in grow lights because I find that that's the best condition for the pink princess. There's a difference between watering this plant in soil and watering it in ponds. So for soil, you want to water the plant when the top layer of soil is dry. You also don't want this plant to be sitting in soggy soil because that will just lead to root rot. It's actually better to underwater than to overwater. Now for plants that are living in ponds, you want the water level to be right below the roots. I find that if the water level is on the roots, it will lead to root rot. So I just like to leave a little bit of water and that's already good enough to encourage a lot of root growth in my experience. In terms of humidity level, this specific pink princess likes high humidity. Anything above 60% is really good for this plant. And I find that if it's anything lower, especially when it's trying to unfurl a new leaf, like what it's trying to do here, it will actually self-destruct and snap itself as it's trying to unfurl because it's just getting stuck. The extra humidity and moisture will help the leaf unfurl and prevent it from self-destructing. This is a perfect example of what happens when you don't have enough humidity for this plant. On this top section, you can tell that it snapped itself. And that's when I had this plant living between 40% to 50% humidity, which is usually fine for most philodendrons. But for this specific one, it was not enough. It likes to self-destruct, but with the right conditions, it'll continue to unfurl. And other signs that it's lacking humidity is when the leaves come out deformed or brown or if it's ripped itself, that's also signs that there's not enough humidity. This is the newest leaf that's trying to unfurl right here. And you can tell that this is the bend point where it will snap itself. Uh, what I did to try to prevent that is to mist it with a lot of water so the moisture will help it loosen better. And I also have it sitting right next to my humidifier and I find that that helps a lot with pink princesses. This is the newest leaf that unfurled and you can tell that I did not have enough humidity for this plant so it ripped itself right here and I don't want that to happen again with this new leaf so the best thing to do is just continue to have it next to a humidifier. From my experience of taking care of this plant for more than two years the stem is a good indication on whether or not this plant has good genetics. So these two perfect examples. On this plant, the stem barely has any coloring on it, which is why each leaf is coming out just green. Whereas on this plant, that pink variegation is all along the stems and the petiole and that is a good indication that this will have high variegation. If you find that your plant is reverting, the best thing to do is try to cut it up on where you last saw variegation. As you can see here, I tried to cut up the plants here to encourage more of that pink variegation, but there's not a lot of pink going on because Another thing that's important is the maturity of the plant. If the plant is not mature enough, it will usually revert back to that green color leaf. And after a couple of years, when the leaf shape starts to develop more into that heart shape leaf is when the pink variegation will show up again. So you can see here it has that kind of 
almond shaped leaf that you get with a lot of juvenile philodendrons. Um, this, after I cut it, it kind of reverted back to a more juvenile version of the plant. Whereas for this one, you can see that it's starting to develop that mature heart shaped leaf. That you can tell that the plant is getting more mature. And this right here is just another baby pink philodendron, which is why it doesn't have a lot of pink on it. Now that we're done with the care for this plant, let's rate this plant. In terms of the size, I would give this a three. Like all philodendrons, if you give it the proper care and the proper support, it will go really big. Next is the difficulty of care. So I would give it a one. It's very easy to care for. It will grow for you. But the fact that it keeps self-destructing because of its humidity requirements, I'm gonna give this a four. Now, in terms of pricing, I will still give it a three, even though the prices are dropping, but to get a high quality pink princess with good variation, it's going to require a higher price. So I'll still give it a three, even though you can find a cheaper one. Lastly, we're going to rate this plant on the rarity of the plant, and I will still give it a three, even though it's very easy to find in plant shops and online, because one, it's very hard to find a good pink princess that has high quality variegation and also mature. So usually when you find pink princesses, they're going to be around this size. The only time where I've seen a very nice pink princess was in Plant the Studio's personal collection. I saw their pink princess, which is very beautiful. I also actually saw one in Greenery Unlimited. Remember the pink princess that was for $500? Even though it was very big, it did not have good variegation in my opinion. So that's also why I will give this rarity rating of a three. 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 Those were my rating for the Pink Princess. Let me know what's your rating in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget the 10 second challenge to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends. Thank you so much and see you next week. Bye.